Okay, now we're welcoming Kirsten Meyer, from, uh, who will talk about the Wellcome Trust Consortium. Great, thank you very much, and um, thank you very much for the organizers to give me an opportunity here to present uh, the UK Consortium, um, which uh, is really an extended pilot for the Human Cell Atlas, and this was funded uh, under the Wellcome Science Strategic Support Initiative. And this is a UK-wide initiative that was spearheaded by Sarah Teichman and involves uh, PIs from, from Cambridge, from the Wellcome Sanger Institute, as well as Cambridge University, from Newcastle University, King's College London, and the University of Oxford. So the aims of, our, uh, of this pilot study is really threefold. Um, first of all, this pilot was really designed to improve capacity, so for methods development. So um, we're aiming to really optimize tissue acquisition and processing, um, also optimizing data generation pipelines, and then developing new analysis and dissemination tools. Um, of course, we also all want to ge generate data for the human cell atlas, and hopefully this will then lead to biological insights. And so these three aims have been, or will be applied to four different themes. First of all, um, a pilot of adult tissues. And I think as Sarah mentioned earlier already, um, all the groups forming this consortium have a strong immune interest. So for all the tissues, we are um, purifying immune cells as well as looking the, uh, at the non-immune component. And also for each of the organs we are analyzing, we're looking at multiple locations. Um, the second theme is an atlas of developing tissue. Um, third, and a, a more deep dive into the skin, um, and then again in line with the immune um, theme, we are also looking at immune tissues and inflammation. And following on from the structure of the human cell atlas in general, we are also following a strategy of looking at dissociated tissues in conjunction with spatial gene expression and the two techniques that we're really developing or uh, developing into a more high throughput uh, a state, our spatial transcriptomics, and SMFish, and particularly RNA scope. Um, so, the organs that we are focusing on are our thymus, immune organs, lung, muscle, spleen, adrenal gland, and kidney, then uh, female reproductive organs, the gut, and then there's the deep dive of the skin. And for each of these organs, we are also um, comparing them to organ development in the developing fetus. And as I mentioned, we are then looking um, in inflammation, in particular autoimmune disorders um, in the skin, that's psoriasis, in the gut, uh, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, celiac disease, um, PSC, which of course also um, manifests in the liver. Um, so one of the, the key aspects, I think, of this particular consortium is that um, we're really trying to build a joint infrastructure. So there are um, uh, a number of tissue sources uh, that are being funded from this grant, in particular um, the Cambridge Biorepository uh, for Translational Medicine, led by Sa uh, Kourosh Seb Parsi in Cambridge, then the HDBR um, in Newcastle, and then the clinical cohorts come primarily uh, from hospitals in Oxford, London, and Newcastle. Um, and whilst there's some um, local processing, really the library uh, prep and sequencing are all um, run through the Sanger pipelines, again, where there's also um, the spatial analysis uh, capacity that's being built. And of course, then um, data analysis is a hugely important aspect, and um, we're developing uh, common tools that can hopefully then be used by um, all the different um, groups. And this joint infrastructure is really reflected by having a number of FTE that are really supporting this joint effort. Um, so obviously there's a, a wide variety of different um, projects within this group, so I just thought I'd pick a couple of little highlights of where we are already making an impact. And I think one of those is really the Human Developmental Cell Atlas. And um, you may well have seen that in the last year, there were papers published on the fetal kidney and the placenta decidua um, in Science and Nature. And for those of you that have been here at the beginning of the week, you will have heard um, uh, Muzz talk about fetal liver hematopoiesis, which is now uh, submitted, and Sarah on the fetal thymus. And of course, um, this data generation has led to really exciting insights 
Um, just to mention one, the, the observation that um, a fetal um, liver uh, hematoiesis happens primarily in the liver, but also physiologically in the skin. And then for the fetal thymus, identifying new cell subpopulations that we really weren't before of in the past, weren't aware of in the past. Um, here are just two little examples of the kind of spatial analysis techniques we're using. Um, here is an RNA scope um, experiment which demonstrated that, a new, that there were two new stromal cell populations in the decidua and that they located to different regions, um, the decidua compacta and spongiosa, um, which clearly are distinct in terms of their staining pattern. And so in this way, it's very nice to use RNA scope to validate the findings from the single cell data. And similarly, uh, we're developing spatial transcriptomics um, within the Sanger pipelines. But um, one of the aims was, of course, also uh, computational tools. And so one example that's already been published is a cell phone DB. So what this tool does is really provide a, a computational framework to uh, try to predict biologically relevant uh, ligand receptor interactions from uh, single cell data. Um, and this, is, um, now, this was published last autumn and is now available and I think is now being, certainly in our lab, implemented in many of the different projects we're using. Um, another important aspect is, of course, data visualization and uh, dissemination. And we are depositing all our data in the DCP. And I think, again, it's very important to point out that within this project, the vast majority of data that is being data generated is open access. And um, so I've just put a few uh, visualization examples. Here, for example, is um, a web page from the Developmental Cell Atlas developed in Newcastle, where people can browse the data in a very user-friendly interface. Um, and, and again, so I think earlier we were talking about um, you know, how can we make this available to non-bioinformatics people. And I think this is one way, for example. Uh, we're also working very closely with the um, EBI, who are developing the Single Cell Expression Atlas. And even though at the moment that is um, for many different organisms, uh, we're really hoping that in the future this can be developed into a more human-specific uh, portal. And of course, there are um, lab and paper-specific um, examples of interactive um, web pages to access the data. And this is just an example. And I think that's probably all I have time for. Thank you. Thank you. Questions? OK. That was a, thanks for the clear talk.